Hello everyone and welcome to the new episode of Retina Roundup for the month of 2022. I am Dr. Abdul Qadir, a VR and popular oncology fit. As usual, we will be exploring some of the recent interesting articles of this month. Starting with the one that carries the good news to the Indian society, which is a prospective double-blind multicentric phase 3 study conducted across 19 centers in India. The purpose of which was to compare efficacy, safety, and immunogenicity of lupins biosimilar ranibizumab with that of lucentis in patients with new vascular age-related macular degeneration. The study included 202 patients, out of which 187 patients completed the study and were distributed in one-to-one -one ratio. Primary efficacy in point was defined as proportion of patients who lost fewer than 15 letters from baseline in pisporific visual acuity while safety profile included assessment of adverse events, ophthalmic examination, physical and systemic examination, and vital parameters. The immunogenicity assessment was based on evaluation of anti-drug antibodies. The study concluded that lupins biosimilar ranibizumab demonstrated therapeutic equivalence, desirable safety, and favorable immunogenicity profile compared to recent. Moving to the next study, which was published in American Journal of Ophthalmology, our next study was a multi-centers control study conducted on 210 participants to evaluate if frequent vigorous physical activity is significantly associated with active central serous polyretinopathy and may represent a risk factor. The participants was divided into two groups. The first group contains consecutive patients with active CSCR and comparable control group of healthy participants in one-to-one -one ratio. The intensity of physical activity was evaluated using a shortened version of International Physical Activity Questionnaire. This study demonstrates a significant association of vigorous physical activity with CSCR, indicating an increased pro probability of the disease by 5.58 times. Our next study is a post hoc analysis of randomized clinical trial to study time course of retinopathy of prematurity regression and reactivation after treatment with intravitreal ranibizumab or laser. The study included 448 eyes of 225 infants, divided into three groups. Group 1 receiving ranibizumab of 0.2 mg, Group 2 receiving ranibizumab of 0.1 mg, and Group 3 treated with laser. Features of disease regression were measured using time to even analysis per eye, corrected for within subject association. Analysis of disease activation and additional treatment were descriptive. In conclusion, eyes treated with intravitreal ranibizumab induced a faster regression of blast disease, stage 3 ROP, and aggressive posterior ROP than eyes treated with laser. Nevertheless, these eyes were associated with fewer additional treatments for incomplete disease regression, but more for disease reactivation. The next study is a cross-sectional study aimed to compare the scleral thickness between the eye receiving multiple anti-PGF with the fellow eye receiving no injection. The study was conducted on 79 patients. Every patient received in a three intravitreal anti-BGF in one eye, and the scleral thickness in the inferior temporal quadrant was assessed using anterior segment OCT. This study showed scleral thinning at the area of repeated injection and advised multiple injection sites to avoid these changes. The next study was a retrospective study of 290 subjects diagnosed with endophthalmitis to assist the impact of early vitrectomy on final vision at nine months in the period between January 2006 and July 2019. This study concluded that cases under vitrectomy within 24 hours of diagnosis had a better visual outcome. And also the study has established poor prognostic factors that was associated with poor final visual outcome. These factors included younger age, poor presenting visual acuity, and culture positive endophthalmitis. Some of the additional interesting findings in this study include around half of the cases were women, indicating no gender predilection, post cataract surgery was the most common cause, culture positive cases was found in around half of the cases, and around two thirds of the cases had a gram positive organism. Going to the next study, it is a multi-center cross-sectional observational study aimed to determine the associations of predominant peripheral lesions with systemic comorbidities in individuals with diabetic retinopathy. The study took place between January 2019 and July 2021 and included 879 participants with varying severity of diabetic retinopathy. 
All participant medical history was recorded, including hypertension, diabetic kidney disease, coronary artery disease, dyslipidemia, and anemia. And all underwent ultra wide field fundus images. This study concluded strong association between predominant peripheral lesions and coronary artery disease and thus mandating cardiology referral in these patients. Going to the last study for this episode, which is from Japan, the study goal was to compare the effects of silicon oil tamponade to that of gas tamponade on the best correct visual acuity after successful vitrectomy for retinal detachment. The study was a retrospective, multi center and included 2,097 cases, out of which only 55 I was, oil was used as a tamponade, and in 2,042 cases, a gas tamponade was used. Visual acuity at six months was compared between the two groups, and in conclusion, even after successful surgery for retinal detachment, eyes that experienced silicon oil tamponade had a poorer best visual acuity than eyes treated with gas tamponade, and silicon oil tamponade should be considered cautious. Thank you for, for your attention, and hope to see you soon next month with new interesting articles. Bye-bye.